so we are starting the class and everything is recorded now. Uh, let me share a screen. Yes. So uh, previous time we talk about some of these data structures that they exist. And in particular, I mean, uh, one uh, language that we can work on it. I mean, th there are similar things in Python, but here I like the, this STL uh, C++ standard template library that I believe actually it came from C++ uh, 11. Um, and that contains uh, lots of things that we want. Uh, this is the geek for geeks uh, website. Uh, so uh, that's a good one actually to go through them and you uh, understand the things. And uh, some of them is already implemented like in C++ and then you can just use them. And indeed these are very important actually that you use uh, them if there are, if you passing some uh, interview exam, for example, at, uh, I don't know, for Google, uh, part of Facebook or uh, other companies that they are using C++, like hedge funds or others, and then that's a good one. Uh, and anyhow, it's a, it has a good structure. You should know about C++. Uh, so uh, uh, this is this uh, class STL. It has actually lots of algorithms. I, I just mentioning some of this that we talk about it. For example, we discussed about the vector list uh, DQ, uh, uh, so array and forward list. Forward list actually is the one that it is just the link list. This DQ is the uh, double ones. That uh, uh, so it is a uh, uh, but uh, this is the one that essentially uh, a Q structure is the one that is talking about that you can insert at uh, end, but you can delete from the uh, front and. Uh, this is the implementation for that, that you can see. Uh, generally, I mean, this is the way that you are doing it. You will say DQ, the structure, and then int, the type of the data that you have it, and this is the name of that. And these are the two important operations that you are seeing. Uh, so you will see a pushback and push front. Uh, do you see my highlights here? When I highlight something, do you see that? Yes. Good. Okay, so so we can have it essentially push back, and then push front. These are the things that you can have it, and then uh, you have you can get the size of that. For example, you can get the max size. Uh, you can say you size at two. Uh, uh, lots of them actually. When you say uh, instead of saying uh, at is a general thing, but some of them actually this has been over uh, like uh, uh, overloaded. I will say that uh, when you say Q size, uh, like array, so you can say Q size two, the same way that you are using array, actually it works as well. So this, you can get the front back and then you can pop front or pop back. And these are the things that you can do it. And these are some of the, I mean, the operations that it shows you that. Uh, so this is the same thing, for example, uh, if you are working with a vector, vector is actually the very good one that it is like very similar to array. You have these other operations, uh, 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 begin, uh, end, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, so this website is geeks for geeks. If you say geeks for geeks STL, you will find uh, all of this stuff. Uh, so uh, like uh, this is the begin and uh, the vector again, you will say, uh, I want to have a vector of int g1, and then uh, you can actually, uh, uh, this is even uh, easier. So in the C++, uh, I think uh, 20 and others, you don't need to even go through this iteration. You can say uh, for i in the list, the same way that you are doing in the Python, you can actually do it in uh, C as well. And you will say for i essentially in the, list, you will go through all of these operations. And again, this is uh, this is the vector int g1. And again, uh, this is also, you can say, for example, g1 of one. So g1 uh, uh, bracket, uh, mm -hmm. open bracket, one, close bracket. Uh, these are the things that you can do it as well. This is a way that for iterations, uh, please mute uh, if you are not talking. Uh, 
so uh, good. So you will say uh, from uh, G one R begin to R end, but uh, as I mentioned, the new things you can also say uh, for I R in the list. Uh, you can uh, I think I R colon the name of the list. Then you can iterate actually over all the iterations. So uh, let me just. Uh... <laughs> Uh, good. So, uh, so this is the type of things that you can do it again. You can get size. You can uh, resize. <laughs> Empty. These are the. You can take the reverse. Uh, this is uh, important. Uh, to note that some of these operations that you have in, for example, the reverse, so reverse actually takes order n to do that one. Uh, so it's not everything that you will see it is order one. So that is important uh, when you are considering these problems. <clears throat> uh, what else uh, here? <coughs> so the, the mapping is, that's also <laughs> very important. So uh, the mapping, as I mentioned, is it like it corresponding to dictionary in Python? You will say map from int to int, and then this is the the things you can actually define a pair. The pair also you can define it. Uh, yeah. So you can just <laughs> define the pair int int, and then you are including, for example, one four. So one maps to four two up to three and so on and so forth. And then again, you can say, for example, the you see, this is the structure that I mentioned. So this uh, bracket actually is a, something that is, <laughs> I think, uh, overloaded, uh, that it can also means the seventh element, like uh, quiz of seven is equal to 10. So that's actually a very good way of the mapping is exactly like an array, but array of, I mean, you can have array of a string. You can have array of a graph. You can have array of any object essentially. So in some sense, whenever you will say that objects, it finds for you the value of that uh, object. You can map any things to any things that you want. And that's the good things about this. So here we say int to int, but you can have, this can be actually an object. It can be a class. From an object of a class to you will map it to another object of another class. So you can actually uh, do this one and you can just uh, essentially use it, these operations. That's a very useful one. And of course, this is the way, as I mentioned, this is the uh, older way, the, the new way you will say, for example, for element, a uh, column uh, in the list, then you will iterate over everything there, and then you can use that element. You can print A or something like this. Uh, so uh, these are some of these uh, that you can. Uh, good. Uh, so uh, this is the set also. Set is another one that you can uh, do it. I mean, set is a set type. Uh, so you will define a set. You can insert inside the set. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, this is the one that I have mentioned. So for example, it says that for str in A, uh, you can just uh, do this one. So, uh, and uh, auto is a very important one. Again, this is something that nowadays is used a lot in C++. Uh, it to become more like Python for anything that you don't want to say, you want the compiler find the type of that you will just say uh, auto. And uh, this is actually, it's, uh, this is uh, one of the issues that actually the Python, the people in using Python say that you don't declare the type and that may cause some problems when you run the program. But here in C++, you need to mention anything there type, or you can say auto. When you say uh, auto, uh, so in that case, uh, that would be uh, uh, important because you explicitly ask compiler to find it for you. But whenever you need to say it, you will essentially, you will 
say this is the type. And here, when you say this is the one that for this one in uh, A, then it's doing that. So you can do this operation str in A for any other thing that I have mentioned, and then just use str as an element here. So that's a very easier way to do essentially for loop here. Uh, there is a multi map, others. So there's another one is a priority queue. A priority queue is also, I mean, important. We will talk about this one when we talk about the heap and the structure of that. But uh, generally, that's another useful thing that you can get the, always the top element uh, very fast there and you can insert it. Both of them takes log n time. We will talk about that one when we talk of heaps. Heaps and priority queues are the same. And uh, last but not least, we have the queue here. We have a stack here. These are the one that we have discussed. And <laughs> like, for example, you define a class. Uh, this is the stack and then you will push and pop. So all of them have already implemented, so you don't need to do it. And it's a very general thing, as I mentioned. You will say a stack, the type of object that you want to put it, and the name of the stack. Uh, good. So any questions so far? So work with it and get a, like a good, uh, I mean, class of functions and data structures to use it, and you can implement everything, and uh, that would be a great things to test and run. And again, it would be great. Uh, there are similar things. All of them, almost all of them are in Python as well. But maybe this is not just, so, uh, this is essentially, that's the one that I like it is everything is here. So everything that you want to do, every data structure is here. So for Python also exists, but you need to talk about lists, you need to talk about arrays, you need to talk about dictionaries and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, And so in that sense, actually, C++ has done a good job of updating itself uh, with the current need. Good. So any questions? Uh, for your project, it would be great if you can actually use this either STL or Python. And that's the important thing to get yourself familiar with that. Good. No, uh, and I think that is important that I mean, we know that uh, when we talk about these operations, uh, we may define them, but at the same time, there are these things that are already implemented. So we don't want, in some sense, to implement these things again. There are this one now, the standard library, but uh, it is important to know exactly how long does it take each of these operations and just don't do it naively and think that because this is the problem again, especially in Python. The people are just using any function and they say, oh, this function only takes order one. It is not the case. And the function, they may take different times. And if you don't know what is going inside this, you may use some functions which are not the most efficient way of doing that. And the running time actually becomes much more. So it is important to know which functions and if it needed, you implement it. So here we are talking about <laughs> the insight but you can always use the one that exists uh, carefully. The functions that are already implemented as a standard library. Good. Uh, let's go and uh, uh, talk about uh, this one. So uh, here we want to talk about binary search. And binary search is uh, like when you do the search, actually, it is. Uh, implemented in some of this. Again, you can do it in Python or C++. But the ideas of binary search is something that you can use for lots of problems. And this is the one problem, again, that uh, during the interviews, etc., they may ask, actually, several questions. That problem is not clear at all. It is a binary search. But indeed, it is a binary search. So we will talk about it uh, today. So uh, here, uh, there are two, uh, two things that we actually, when we also discuss about this, uh, documents uh, about the STL. <coughs> we have two things. One is the sequences and the sets. So sequences generally they have the elements which are have some order. We may want to get take them sorted or get them sorted, uh, but there are some initial order is given to us and the order is important. Sets, uh, however. Uh, 
the order of in the elements in the set is not important. We of also in the elements, it says that uh, there might be the case that some elements appear more than once. So uh, some elements more than one. in a sequence. In a set, often an element does not appear more than once. If it appears more than one, then we call it multiset. If you see it here, for example, in the STL that we discussed, actually there were these uh, things. Uh, you see, we have an unordered third, we have an unordered multiset, we have uh, set, multi-set, we have all of them. And uh, by the way, there are also some of these, for example, about searching, sorting algorithms that exist. So there are such kind of algorithms also have been uh, implemented here. So about the binary search, for example, is already implemented here. So you can just use the binary search that we are discussing here. So you will say that this is the binary search from this number to this number and which number that you want to find. And you can just, this is already implemented. So, or the sorting algorithms that we are discussing here. So, uh, so these are the sorting algorithms that there are uh, different algorithms. The sort, for example, is the one that is using it. And then you can just use it. Uh, so generally, I think it is a, a quick sort or, uh, so this is a quick sort or uh, like, other type of sorts that exist there. Some of them have been already implemented here uh, that we will discuss them as well. Sequence versus sets that we talk about it. So uh, when we talk about the binary search and sorts, we mainly talk about sequences. Uh, sets are more like the, so it's like the concept of dictionaries or others, we may talk about uh, sets as well. But here we talk about more about as a sequence. And here the order is important. Uh, of course, the input is that we always assume that this uh, sequence or set has a size n. And here, the, what is the idea of binary search? The idea of binary search is that you want to, whenever, uh, this is the most important thing about binary search that you need to uh, cut the search space in half or approximately half by asking only one question. So you want to cut the search space in half or approximately half by asking one question. By approximately half, it means that even if you just don't make it exactly half, even actually if you do it one third, two thirds, like you make sure that the smaller size is at least one third, that is still it is a binary search. So it is, uh, uh, and it's still the number of questions that you will ask would be log n, and n is the input size. So uh, let's, uh, let me see a formal, uh, way of doing that. This is the way actually it is implemented. So we just want to make sure that you know what is inside this binary search. And then you use that ideas, not necessarily binary search, to solve other problems. So. Uh, good. So what is this one? So here you are given a sequence. Uh, so here we have this uh, sequence of x1 less than x2, less than xn. So this is the input. So we know that this is very important. So whenever we talk about binary search, uh, there should be, I mean, uh, some kind of sorted, that is given to us. Otherwise, we cannot do binary search. We cannot just do binary search on unsorted things. Uh, sometimes this uh, somehow sort is not given explicitly to you. It is given implicitly to you. And that's your job actually to find this uh, uh, implicit uh, sorting uh, 
or the sorted way of elements and try to use it for binary search. And so this is the, essentially the input that is given to you. And then you are given a real number Z. You want to find whether Z appears in the sequence or if it does not. So you want to say whether there's an a Z that is given to you. So this is the input and the, and in, like Z. And you want to say uh, whether, uh, There is a xi equal to z for some i. Or not. So you want to see whether there is a, whether xi is equal to z for some i or not. Uh, and uh, here again, the idea is that, I mean, if there are more than there might be here, note that one element may repeat it. So in that case, uh, sometimes you want to find just uh, any element that is equal to xi. If, if there is one element equal to that, you may want to find it. Sometimes you want to find the range. So uh, you want to find all these people that all of them are equal to z. Because as I mentioned, in a sequence, one element may appear more than one. Uh, in that case, I mean, you don't want to, uh, it might be the case almost like half of the array is Z. You don't want to print all of them because if you want to print all of them, it is already more than log in uh, time that we are talking about it. However, you want to say, uh, where is the first time that Z start and where is the last time that we see Z? We want to find the range and that is also possible to do it in log end. So these are some variants of, uh, uh, binary search that some of them probably, I mean, it's already implemented in C++ and you can give as an option, like I want like the first element appear that Z or the last element appear in Z. Uh, but you can also write it down your own procedure for that if it is not there. Okay. Uh, uh, and here uh, also it might be the case that the input, in the input we don't say, uh, we may not give the whole array, we may just give uh, some kinds of, uh, I mean, the pointer to this array and just may mention index n. So we will say one n and z. This is the one that we have seen it actually in the STL. So we say that find uh, an element between the first element and the last element all, among all elements, which is equal to z for some i. Does everything make sense? Yeah, I think so. Uh, great. Okay, so let me just uh, oh, this is the input. Now, uh, let's see uh, what is the idea. So the idea, of course, is uh, like not a hard one uh, for binary search itself. But uh, if you there are some variants that can be actually quite tricky. So uh, what do you do? So you just uh, uh, consider the elements. So the algorithm is this one. You are comparing the element X, a ceiling of N over two. And again, the size of the array is one to N. If Z is less than X of N over two, it means that clearly Z is in the first half of the sequence. So you just compare this one, and then you are just considering this N over two guy. And if Z is less than this guy, then uh, you will uh, let me just change the thing. So if uh, if this is uh, if Z is less than this guy, uh, erase some of this. Yeah, if this is less than this one, then you will come here. And if these, if uh, this is uh, less than or equal to Z, then you will come to here. So that's a uh, simple things. Mm. So uh, what is the, uh, like, let's see the code. And uh, of course, I mean, uh, this is the, you can consider it as an induction. What is the base case? The base case is that the size of this array is only one. If the size of the array is only one, then you will just compare it, this array Z with this guy. 
And if it is equal, you will return that. If it is not equal, you will say such element does not exist in my array. Uh, so uh, code for that, I mean, you want to just see it. So you have a binary search, essentially Z, L, R, left, right, and X is the array. So the input is an uh, array X and the integers Z, L, R. Z, the element that you want to find, left means left and R means right. And an index, uh, the output would be an index I such at X I equal to Z or minus one otherwise. So what do we do if we L is equal to R? Essentially means that in this case, we have only uh, one element. So this is essentially the one element case. So if this is one element case, essentially you will just check if this guy is equal to Z, then you will return find is equal to L or find is equal to minus one. And I think in this case, actually, you need to say you need to say return as well. I, I mean, you can just do the return or there is. I mean, if you don't do return, this is the one that uh, here. So if it is equal to that, then you will do that. Elf, uh, of course, means that uh, if this is the one that you are done. Now, if it is the case, it means that uh, L is not equal to R. Uh, what do we do in this case? Uh, you will define uh, M equal to half of L plus R, the middle element. So you can actually add this one. It is not needed, but you can, if you want to have it maybe more efficient, you can say that one. If XM is equal to Z, then you will, so if this is the middle element, if this is equal to Z, uh, you can just find equal to M and return here. But this is not needed. So you can actually just ignore this part and just say, just compare this one. So if, uh, uh, Z is less than XM, then you will do the binary search from Z, L, and uh, M minus one, because you know that uh, this element is, so it, it is not M uh, because it is less than that. So in that case, you can just uh, go and with M minus one and try to search it. Uh, however, if it is not the case, then you need to go from, actually this should be just one. So here you will go from Z. Note that in this case, if we don't have this condition that I have crossed out, it is possible that uh, X of uh, Z is equal to X of M. So in that case, you should start from M as the, so this is like the thing. So we have it, So if you consider this one, we have L, we have R, we have M, so either this guy is equal to this one. I mean, if it is this less than this, you are searching this part, but if it is equal or greater than or equal, then you are doing this part. That includes M itself, and then you are finding that. What about the time complexity? The time complexity of this one is this one. Uh, since each, um, so whenever you will, uh, compare, you know that after that, the size of this array, it becomes half. Again, even you don't need to have it half. Uh, even if you get it, you know that the one part is at least one third of the array. Then uh, you can see that then it takes only logarithmic number of times. That That is exactly the definition of somehow logarithm that uh, you, this would be the exactly log n times to find your elements. So that's the benefit of essentially any binary search. And uh, this is, uh, again, uh, one of the few algorithms that we will consider it and it is sublinear. So, uh, and it is exact. So uh, why is it the case? In some sense, uh, we are given an uh, array of size uh, N, which is sorted. So this additional property is needed for us such that uh, we can't do this order login because we are going sublinear. Generally, you need to at least read the input. But here essentially means that some other procedure has read the input, made sure that it is at least sorted 
if not sort it uh, itself. And then you can do is this login operations. Uh, only login, and you will just see certain point of the input. But again, this we can do it because we have this property that the array that is given to us is somehow sort. Any questions? Good. And now let's go to the... Uh, So here, these are the examples of that. You can actually see uh, many more uh, examples in the, this uh, book, uh, Introduction to Algorithm and Creative Approach by Udi members. And you can find actually several of these also, for example, in website like geek for geeks uh, that the binary tree is you, the binary search is used, but in an implicit manner. So uh, uh, you will see some examples here. Uh, so for example, this is the thing, a sequence x1 to xn is said to be cyclically sorted if the smallest number is the xi. So generally we have this concept of things that x1, x2, x3 to xn, and we know that, I mean, if the, it is generally sorted, it is, means x1 is less than others. But here, it is not the case. So we know that actually uh, xi is the sorted order. So what's the meaning of that? So it means that, uh, you know, uh, for example, we are starting from x, xi here. Then we are going up to xn. And then uh, xn itself also is less than x1 to xi minus 1. So uh, here, uh, so we have <clears throat> xn is less than or equal to. So, uh, but again, the input that is given to you is this one. So uh, the input is x1. to xn, so that's the input. But this uh, input is uh, cyclically sorted. So it means that some xi, we don't know what is this, and that's actually our job here. That's the one that is the least element. So it starts from, and in some sense, actually xi minus one is the largest element. So this is the, so this is the smallest element. And this guy is the largest. And the idea is that, I mean, we don't know where is this i, and that's our job. So you want to find the position of the minimal element or the minimum element in the set. So you want to find this xi. Is the problem clear? Please unmute and answer. Yes. Yeah, but then couldn't you just like, when you iterate through the array, just see like, if the next element is like uh, less than? Yes, and... good. So, uh, so yes, so th this is the thing. So this array is given to us, x1, x2 to xn. Say this is like you are, for example, in an interview, say that we have this property, you want to find xi. And then you ask, they ask you, what is the solution? So of course, the first thing is coming to you is that, okay, I can just do it a linear search algorithm, just go and just find the first element as, as you will see here, we know that this is the first element that actually xi minus one is greater than xi. So that's the first part, the, the, this is the first part that this happens. That's the part that uh, you can go and find it and report that one. And, and that's probably the first solution that you are given to it. And then of course, the running, uh, uh, implementing that is not that hard. Uh, then they will ask you, what is the 
running time of this algorithm and what do you answer? It's so O of n. Oh, it's O of n essentially. Then you need to say or, or n and then this is the next question. Can you do anything better than that? And this is exactly the thing. So this type of interview, they generally they don't probably ask you about log log because log log is a complicated thing. So I don't know anything the, uh, that uh, not the easy things to get uh, log log. Uh, but anyway, this is actually interesting. Let me just give you such that you have some ideas. This is interesting. They don't probably ask me in an interview, but it is something that you may work about some problem you want to work on it. So uh, if you go from n to n over two, and this n over two, it can be actually n over some any constant. n over any constant, uh, then this uh, the running time of algorithm would be, so for c is a constant. So if for anything, if you go to n or, Yeah. If you go uh, n, uh, from n to this, then the running time of this algorithm would be log n. So if you go from n to n over 2 or n over 3 or anything would be log. However, if you go from n to SQL root of n, or I don't know, maybe the n to some constant again, for C some constant, maybe I should mention that C is a constant. If you go from N to SQL root of N, note that here, if we are going to N to N over two, so we are somehow linearly decreasing it here, but we go from N to SQL root of N, it becomes much smaller. That's the case that I, I actually, then the running time of your algorithms would be log, log n. And why the idea? The, the idea is that actually, so if you write n equal to, so if you write n two to the k, what is SQL root of n? So if n is equal to two to k, two what to is k SQL? over two? Yeah, exactly. So then this would be two essentially two to the k over two. Why do we get log log? Because on the so k is already log of n. Now on the power we are doing these things that we discussed. So when you go from n over two, n over two essentially would be log n. So here on the power, power is already log. On the power, you will go from k to k over two. So in that case, actually, when you go on the power, that would be log of log, which would be log log n. So this is something for you. I mean, it is a bit probably uh, more than any, uh, if there is a, some question that you can answer that and you get log log n, I think you will get the job <laughs> because that's a complicated thing. Generally, when they say anything better, they mean log n. And not like like unless it is a, some constant again constant would be trivial probably they don't ask you for some constant <laughs> uh, unless the problem I mean is not a very interesting one that we say only seeing the constant number I don't know see the first element or the last element or you can uh, decide about this uh, so this does not happen generally but that's it anyhow so you are uh, so here you want to say can we do anything better than that so here, whenever they will say such kind of thing better than this, it means that you need to use actually the ideas of uh, uh, binary search. So what is the idea? So it is like very simple again. You need to consider uh, consider two numbers. Again, these two numbers, you can think about that uh, you are uh, given as this kind of, this is the range that you want to do it. LR. Now consider this middle guy. This, this is M. Now, <coughs> <coughs> so if X of L is less than X of M, what is the meaning of that?
So is it possible that if uh, x of L is less than x of L, then I is here? Please unmute and answer. So is it possible that if x of L is less than x of L, I is here? Uh, no, but could it be x of L itself? Yes, uh, of course you can check it. I mean, that is always, uh, you can, uh, uh, it, it, it can be actually like a x of L itself. Uh, but, uh, so, uh, yeah. So uh, as we discussed, actually this always, I mean, this is in the binary search. I will say uh, to get it, you can possibly do it without that, but it is always good to check this idea. Because by definition, if you know that xi minus one is greater than xi, then you know that this is the element. So if x of L, you know, for example, x of L is less than x of R, then you can say actually in this case, x of L is the solution. So this is the order one that is always easy to have this kind of, I will say sanity check into the binary search. You don't, generally you can just remove it and write it without any such conditions like initial conditions, but it is fine to have these additional things there to just make sure it is correct because to get it correct without this condition, it might be a bit harder. Uh, so here, yes, you can say that if, if, if X of L is less than X of R, actually it is the case. Otherwise, in that case, X I actually, I cannot be here exactly because this condition that I have mentioned. Uh, then uh, uh, here, because if it is the case, so if this guy is uh, X of L is less than X of M, it means that uh, we are somehow uh, from here, to here or from here to here because this guy is, has like essentially increasing so it means that i cannot be here because if it is the case we know that this guy actually is greater than this guy note that this this guys i mentioned that uh, x1 is already greater than xn uh, or xn is less than x1 so it means that x2 also is greater than xn so it means that i cannot be here so in that case we need to do binary search in the other part so in some sense, this is the case that it tells you that there is some uh, anormality. If, if it is the case, it means that there is no anormality here. So it means that uh, I is not here. You should go to the second half. But if it is not the case, so if it is L is less than M, but X of L is greater than or equal to X of M, then in that case, actually means that the anormality here and you should just search it here. And that's the whole algorithm essentially. So uh, this is the case, uh, uh, I think this is the condition that you will put it uh, in some sense. Uh, yeah, so if so that if L is equal to R, then return L, of course here you may, I mean, if the size of this array is one, then you can return L. Else you will just take M as the middle guy, the one that I have mentioned. If X of M is less than X of R, then you will do cyclically find this one between M and X. Uh, so here you are finding between, uh, so if uh, here is talking about if this guy, the same thing you can say, if X of M is uh, less than X of R, then you know that uh, it is not in this part of the array. You will come here, you will search here. So I is not here and you need to search here. Otherwise you will go and you will search it this array. And this is essentially the idea. Again, I think it would be good to check it and write it down and always having such kind of conditions that it is good to have this one in your program. Unless you will truly think about it. So in an interview, you may not have, I mean, again, talking about interview, essentially it means that by interview, I mean something that you need to write something very fast and you have a limited time and you want to write it correct. In that case, it would be good actually to put such kind of conditions. So for example, if you say that if uh, uh, just check whether L is less than R or not, if it is the case, you can just 
be port essentially l and you are done uh, having this condition is not bad but if you want to write it like for example present it in a very nice way with the minimum number of lines then actually you can remove them but you should do it very carefully and you will consider all corner cases such that you don't miss anything always putting this kind of sanity check this is the one that you can actually do it also in python uh, this is the <coughs> things that they will call it unit test and in the unit test you want to make sure that this binary search type of thing that you have mentioned is correct so it might be case actually you, you can put asserts in python and then just make sure that uh, this condition is satisfied that for example uh, like uh, if uh, i don't know if xl is if x1 is the correct one because you can check it here then in your program should also give this one as the correct answer. So you check whether this is the case. If it gives it, then the code is clean and that's fine. If not, it means that you didn't consider some corner cases and you need to <coughs> be very careful. Again, a computer, the good or bad thing is that it understands only the, the precise statement. Even if you put in instead of less than, if you put less than or equal, or instead of less than or equal, you will put it less than, it may actually cause error in the program and uh, this is the thing that you should test it essentially using something like a unit test type of thing to test. Uh, clear all the wrong let's go to the next problem here so let's see another problem So binary search uh, for a, a special index, fixed index. So what is the problem? So you are given a sorted sequence of distinct integers, a1 to an. Good. So you are given a sorted sequence of distinct integers a1 to an. You want to see whether there is an index i such that xi are equal to i. Again, when you, I mean, some problem is given to you, or I mean, you have the thing, it is important to find the exact properties. Here it says that distinct integers, that's a very important thing actually to notice. So you know that no element has, is repeated here. And the question is that whether you want there is an index i such that a i is equal to i. Here, there is no binary search here. I mean, like even in the previous case, there was not a binary search. You want to find the minimum elements there. So it was not v that you want to find it. You want to find the index i. Here, similarly, this case, there is no concept of, there is no nothing binary here. You want to see whether there is an index i such that a i is equal to i. So again, a binary search cannot be applied directly here. So you cannot just use that function you need to write your own function. And that's exactly the reason that we are discussing this one. The principle still can be applied here. So what is the idea, again, if it is, uh, a1 to a n is given to you, consider a of n over two, and then compare it with n over two. Uh, like I'm talking about the ceiling of n over two. So if a, a, a of n over two is equal to n over two, then you are done, you will do that. However, if they are not equal, then there are two cases it happens. If a of n over two is less than n over two, then what is the meaning of that? Please unmute and ask. So if <laughs> so 
So you will consider the middle guy. If A of N over two is equal to N over two, then you are done. If A of N over two is less than N does over two. Mean, does that mean the left hand side can't be it? The left side can't be it, so like from- Why, why the left, side, left hand side cannot be it? Because like the, because you know that the middle one is less than N over two. So none of the, none of the last hand elements can be equal to its index because the index is yeah uh, uh, yeah go ahead because the index is what because the index should be greater i think or most Mostly. Yeah, so uh, okay, so, so this is the idea. So let's consider these things essentially. You are considering it here. Let's do it here. So you consider this A of N over 2. You know that this is less than N. So this is uh, N over 2. So you know that A of N over 2 is less than N over 2, correct? Now come here. So for example, consider one element here that the difference between this guy, essentially, the index between this guy is i less than n over 2. So here, essentially, n over 2 minus i. Good. If you consider n over 2 minus i, of course, this guy, it, the, the, what is the value of this? We clear it, actually. So just consider here, this is the element n over 2 minus i. So you knew that this guy is less than n over 2, correct? A of n over 2. Now, you will come i guys before. You know that these guys are distinct. This is a very important thing. So you know that this guy should come like the value of this guy a of n over two that should be at least also i less than n over two why because they are distinct and they need to come uh, essentially uh, and again this is also another thing it is a sorted array sorted sequence so we know it is sorted so they should come down and they should come and they are distinct so they should come at least by i less than that because this guy was less than this, essentially means that A of this guy, N over 2 minus I, this is also less than this guy. Because this guy was less than that, this guy comes I down. This is exactly I comes down, but this guy comes at least I down. And this guy already was less than that, so you know that it is not the case. So this is the whole idea. If this is less than that, then go essentially right. Else, go left. So this is the main observation that you need to actually make it from the three fact here. The fact that this is a, essentially it is sorted. This is that they are distinct integers, and you want to find an element which is ai equal to i. From these three important things sorted, this one and this one, you can make essentially these things, and that shows you that if this guy is less than this, the left cannot be the correct one, so the right should be the possibly can be the correct thing, and you can just do the binary search. The code is very similar to that. Is it clear? Yes. Uh, great. But wait, you can read uh, my uh, writing, like not uh, writing in the, the time writing it, the one that is on the background, correct? Yeah. Good. Uh, okay. So let me just clean everything. Uh, 
it is another problem that is actually interesting. Good. So binary search in a sequence of unknown size. So uh, assume that actually this happens a lot. You don't know what is the size of n that you are working on. So uh, like in some sense, the, the input, this actually happens, for example, in a streaming algorithm or several schemes that you are talking about, you want to find actually, Uh, good. So you want to find essentially this Z in an array that you don't know what is the size of that. So it is X2, X1, X2, and so on and so forth. And you know this is a sorted array, so it is less than equal this one. But you don't know what is N. So in some sense, N is unknown. You don't know what is the length of it. You are at the beginning of this stream, and you, you don't know what is the size of N. So in this case, you cannot do binary search because in the binary search, you will consider the beginning and the end and you will consider the middle guy. We don't know what is the middle guy. So what is the technique that you are doing here? So the technique is this one. So first you will consider Z, this is called the doubling the search space. So you need to double the search space. This also is this idea, somehow is the complement of a binary search and is used a lot. So you will, given this Z, so you will compare Z with X1. You will compare this one essentially between Z and X1. If Z is equal to X1, that's fine. If not, then you will double the range. So what's the meaning of that? Then you will consider Z and X2. So you will consider Z and X2. So I doubling this one. If it is equal, then you are fine. If it is less than equal, then we will uh, do something. But if, uh, so say for now, Z is uh, less than, uh, Z is greater than X2. What do you do? Then again, you double. So this time you will consider X4 and you will compare Z with it. Then if still, if Z is, so all of them is the case that Z is less than, if, uh, sorry, Z is greater than. Uh, so if Z is greater than that, then you will doubling. If it is equal, you already found it. Then you will go X8. So you will just the doubling things until Z becomes less than or equal to X to to the I. Good. So then we are we have this property that Z is less than or equal to X to to the I. Then actually we are in a good shape. Why? Because we know that Z was greater than X to to the I minus one, and Z is less than or equal to x of two to die. So it means that actually z should be in the interval of, so I will say this is the open, x two to the i minus one and x of two to die. Then this is actually equal. Then in this case, actually you will do a binary search So first you are using this uh, kind of essentially doubling the, so you are uh, doing this idea of the double search space. Such that you will find these conditions. When you find this condition, then you know that V is greater than X two to the I minus one. Then you will do a binary search here to find. Good. Is this also O of log of n? 
Yes, uh, so, so we will uh, do essentially this. So uh, this is uh, so. What is the uh, so? What is the running time of this algorithm? So the first thing is that you need to find the correct this two to the i. Correct. How many comparisons we need to find to find this x to the two to the i? Log base two of them. Yeah, so maybe actually I can, I can call it this one. I will call it, uh, yeah. So if you want to find essential, so you want to find the index, the correct index of the, say, for example, xj is equal to x to z. So j is the index of that. If j is the index of that, actually, how many comparisons you need to find this correct two to the i case? How many? Log base two of j. Exactly. So you need to do it, I mean, uh, log, I mean, this base two of j. So you need to first do this one, then you will find the correct one. Then you find this correct thing, then how many more operations, comparisons you need to find the, actually the xj itself? What is the size of this, these things essentially? Two to the power of j minus two to the power of j mi minus one. So yeah, uh, 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 j uh, no no uh, sorry this is i essentially. So here you can say that the size of this guy actually would be at most j as well. J or j over two or something like this. Good. Uh, it would be actually at least uh, the the size of this guy. Uh, the size of this guy is at least uh, it would be at most j. If J happens, J appears in between, good. So the interval that you want to do it, the binary search has size J. So you need to pay another like J here. So the running time of this algorithm would be two times like J. Is it clear? Any question, please, I mean, Unmute and answer. Does it make sense why this is like two times like J? First, essentially, to find the correct this two to the i that this happens. And we know that the index of z is j. So xj is equal to z. You need to first do this one. This is the first like j. And then you need to, when you have it, you have this interval. You know that the size of this interval is at most j. So then you need to do it another like j to find the correct thing in this interval. This is two times like j. Now, actually that is interesting thing. So say if you know n. So we were talking about the case of unknown n. But what about actually even known n? So what is this one? This, uh, this is uh, here, what was j? xj was equal to z. So j was index of z. Correct? So here we got some, uh, some things that the index of this, uh, the running time is two times like j, where j is the index of i. Index of z. In the, uh, if you wanted to do, say, if you you know the binary, the whole array, and if you know n, then the running time would be log n. Where n is the size of the array, so n here is the size of array. What is the good things about this? So this is n the size of the array, j here is the index of z. It seems that actually it is the case that if, the, if you know, suspect that this element that you want to find, it appears very early in the array, this might be this two like j would be better than like n. So you want to see what is the exact thing? So you want to say actually what is two like j is less than like n. 
So if you come, if you do this one, essentially you can just uh, this, uh, you can make it two to the power of J and then you will get uh, this one. J becomes less than or equal to SQL root of N. Good. So what's the meaning of that? It means that if you have even an array of size N, if you know that the element that you want to search is appearing in the first SQL root of N of array, if you do this kind of doubling search space and then do the binary search on that, that would be, you have less essentially number of comparisons if versus the case that you want to do the binary search over the whole thing. And of course, uh, this is, uh, if you consider N, this SQL root of N is a very small part. So it really should be, I mean, uh, very early in the array. So if this is N over two, this is SQL root of N. So this is a very early thing in the array. If it is the case, actually, it would be better if you do this technique of doubling search space and then you do binary search. However, if you don't know N in general, where is the index J, it might, you might be better to do it just in, because otherwise, if this guy appears later in the array, here you pay essentially two times log like N versus log like N in the binary search. Good. So uh, we talk about this. This is uh, just laughing. I wanted to go these things. Uh, so this is also uh, uh, this is also some other thing that we may do it in practice. So uh, as I mentioned, so uh, like if you know that this array that you this index that you want to find is actually happening very early in the array, like here, you may do this kind of uh, things. The trick that I have mentioned. Uh, this kind of doubling space, doubling the search space, and then do binary search. However, you may do also some other thing that we actually do it in practice. It is called interpolation search. <clears throat> so uh, uh, it might be the case that, uh, uh, so if you know this value, so interpolation search, when do we use it? When you are doing, for example, I mean, something that, uh, we are talking with some values that we have, I mean, some understanding about it. What's the meaning of that? So you are doing, for example, doing this. Uh, you are doing a binary search here and you will find this guy. So you want to find the element 10 and then you will see this element is actually say nine, the middle guy. So in this case, it is the concept of interpolation search. You may not want to do another binary search to find this guy. I should say, oh, it is nine. Maybe the, if I go next one would be already 10. Or maybe this is other guy is nine and then the next one is going 10. So here you are doing a binary search here and then you will do some linear search here. So this is the binary. Search here, and then you are doing some kind of linear search here. So this would be a way that actually you will find this element uh, much uh, faster. A good example is the case. So you want to find you are this, you have a book and you want to find the page I don't know uh, four hundred, and then when you open the book, it is in the page three ninety eight. So in this case, you don't do another binary search to find the middle of this guy. Say the book has one thousand pages, then you will just go a few more pages such that you will find this other guy. Actually, instead of this linear search, you may also do this kind of doubling space even. So this doubling space idea that I mentioned it. So you may campaign, first you do in practice, it might be the case that, and when we talk with the values, you may do the binary search to make it even more efficient, especially this is we are talking about very large data. So when you have such a large data, you will find this index, which is approximately close by. Then you know that, okay, it is, it is nine here. The next guy should be 10. Or you may just do some linear search to just find the next, next page. Or you may even do it some doubling space. Maybe you will go again, start from one. If one is not there, maybe it is still nine. Then you go two more. See whether you will find the correct range. And if two is no, is maybe four more like then go four and then eight, this idea that they have mentioned, you will find the range. You don't need to do again middle of, so from here, you don't go actually to the middle because 
you don't want to go to unknown again place. It, this might be faster because otherwise, so in some sense, if you are in the proximity, uh, if you are very close or in the uh, like uh, very close to the item that you want to search, you may use this idea of linear search or uh, doubling a space. Uh, for search that we discussed to find it faster. This is the one that is called interpolation search, that we are doing binary search plus linear search or this doubling space things and that. Good. So that was the idea that uh, it is about binary search. Uh, again, there are several more ex exercises and assignments in the book, uh, with the member book that you can actually do it. And also some website like geek for geeks If you go there, for search for the binary search ideas, there are several problems that you can actually use the binary search. And that would be a very good example to do all of these things and test it. Any questions? Good, so if there is no more question, I think uh, we are finishing and then we are talking more about the sorting and other type of algorithm later. And again, uh, we discussed this idea that yes, there are STL and others, but these problems, these are some of them are more, uh, I mean, for big data or some special problem, these are not the ones that are written already in C++ or Python or others, uh, but that's the thing that you should understand it and you should have your own implementation of binary search or sorts or other things. Great, so uh, that's it. And then we will talk next session. That will be a remote as well. Uh, talk to you.